Welcome back to the Perpetual Wealth Podcast, a show for clients of Paradigm Life. This season, we're empowering you to take control of your financial future using the core principles of the Perpetual Wealth Strategy. Now, before we dive in, a quick but essential disclaimer. While this podcast is primarily for our valued clients at Paradigm Life, it's open to anyone interested in enhancing their financial knowledge. However, please remember that our information should not be taken as a direct tax, legal, or financial advice. We strongly recommend consulting with a wealth strategist at Paradigm Life or your financial team before making any decisions based on our discussions. Today, we continue our journey into cash flow, protection, and wealth building, the foundational principles of the Perpetual Wealth Strategy. Let's dive in and explore how to optimize your wealth and achieve financial independence. Your journey continues now. Hey, everyone. Today, I'm here with a good friend and colleague of mine, John Stewart. John, how are you doing? I'm doing great, Pat. That's great, Thank to, you. great to have you here. This is going to be an awesome, uh, awesome conversation. You know, uh, paradigm life, obviously the word paradigm, uh, we still have lots of people that mispronounce it. I had someone the other day say parad paradigm, par paradigm, you know, and, uh, but you know, Stephen R. Covey popularized the idea of a paradigm, which is the way in which you use, uh, view the world, right? It's your perspective of life. Uh, it's the context of which you fit, you know, essentially all information and, uh, whether it's financially, which obviously we're going to speak about today, but it's really other, uh, elements uh, of life. And so I feel that it's really important, and because John is uh, one of our most successful wealth strategists here at Paradigm Life and has worked with thousands of clients over, uh, over the years, it's important to, for our audience to really understand the perspective that we bring to them, the perspective that uh, we continue to refine, but that perspective is paramount because what it does is it brings about a strategy, a way in which clients... Uh, can achieve what they want financially. It's uh, the financial future they dreamed uh, dreamed of. It's the criteria behind that end result, which is certainty. It's not rolling the dice and hoping it all works out. It's strategically establishing your wealth so that it can materialize with the highest degree of certainty possible and actually be the wealth that's going to give you the financial future you've hoped for. So, John, you know, I I celebrate you because. You have, you know, been with us for what thirteen years since two thousand uh, thousand ten, and it is it's been a, an incredible journey with you, and it's awesome to hear the experience that so many clients have with you, uh, where they're able to really see what's possible for them uh, financially. And so we're going to get into a number of videos, but in this in this first one, you know, we, clients typically they, they come to us because they they want something. Right. And so maybe expand on what I had just said in regards to a financial future, right, with certainty or financial future they've dreamed of. Sometimes people just don't they they sell themselves short. They don't see what they're capable of or what's possible for them. Uh, but I feel like our philosophy of life and our perspective of life, not just within the financial world, allows them just to, to peer into a future that uh, we help give them confidence to uh, to create for themselves and their families. Yeah, well, wow, that that's a. It's a big subject, you know, with so many people, they spend the majority of their time on, on learning about their career and becoming an expert there. And, you know, the, the goal for most is to, to have a good career, have a good job, have a good uh, business, whatever it may be, as they earn their money. Now it's really putting that money away and growing that wealth to where they have financial freedom. They have, you know, control of what they put together. And that's where, just because our, our time is spent on the business, on our expertise, there's really not a lot of time spent on that wealth creation and ultimately wealth preservation. Yeah. Now, look at you. So, you see, because you had you mentioned some key points here, because you know, I look at where people form the way in which they view money, mm -hmm. right? And in large part, it's influenced by uh, their parents, their family, the you know social circles they were raised in, right? And and unbeknownst to them, it wasn't done by design, but they come to certain conclusions about, okay, what do I do with my money? Is, is a lot of money good or is a little money, you know, is it bad to be wealthy or pursue that? Or 
should I, should I not do that? It's like people have these like intuitive things that have, uh, you know, come up when they approach the subject of money that were designed, right, by things that, you know, they really didn't choose as the way with it in which they wanted to view money. Well, and so many times, I mean, they're, you know, I, I really like the aspect there's, there's no bad investments, there's only bad investors, mm -hmm. and they simply pick the wrong, wrong tool. And it's like, you know, they go back to experience and, you know, they see their dad hit their thumb on the nail with a hammer and go, I'm never going to use a hammer again. And a very powerful tool that can be used the wrong way. It can, at the same time, even used the right way mm -hmm. can, can hurt us when we form opinions on uh, which way to do it. And I think one of the hardest things for us as individuals is to take an unbiased approach at really where we're at and be kind of agnostic on what tool we pull out of the toolbox, just simply the best one for the job. And um, that's really what I feel like we try to do here. But it's one of the biggest hurdles most people do uh, have is to get rid of their preconceived notion of what it's going to look like or what they have to use to get to their their end goal. Yep. So I look at the the way in which we view a, a healthy financial life, getting uh, people to this end result that uh, that they want it is it's not a single dimensional approach, right? It's a multi dimensional approach because there's so many different areas. Uh, of financial life that kind of work together. But most people are taught uh, specific either products or strategies or ways of doing things that are single dimension and without uh, is having essentially a strategy around the other dimensions of finance, those dimensions are all ultimately what disrupts uh, what they are doing, what they've learned. Uh, an example is, you know, you could have essentially a, a max a maxing out your 401k, putting all the money in the stock market. Not to say that that's a bad strategy. It could, could be a good strategy, but then uh, a disability, a job loss, market volatility, uh, a divorce, a lawsuit. There's some things that can happen that will disrupt uh, that wealth within this specific, you know, financial vehicle from materializing, right? So those, that's just an example of things that are uh, you know, happening in other dimensions of finance that could potentially disrupt what you are focused on in that single dimension. Absolutely. And I think most financial tools that are being being taught, like you say, are a single dimension. You know, the, the financial world, Wall Street banks would love to put everybody in a box and do, you know, max out your 401k, make it very, um, they try to make it simplified by putting everybody into the same path, mm -hmm. which could be a great path for mm -hmm. some, but for a lot of people, it's the very thing that holds them back from their ultimate goal. Yeah. Yeah. So we've, as, as we've kind of had experience with, you know, a number of clients, thousands of clients since 2007, you know, we've, we've essentially explained, you know, their macroeconomic life, their holistic life, all of these dimensions of finance uh, into three primary categories, you know, and these, what I, uh, would say ultimately become the obstacle that prevents people from getting the outcomes that uh, that they want. So the first one is is cash flow, right? It's the money that comes in and out uh, of your financial financial life. Obviously, having positive cash flow allows you to save and invest. Having negative cash flow uh, requires you uh, go into debt, and that usually spirals in the other direction, right? So having healthy cash flow, which I would say is a function. Uh, of you know having a spending strategy, not excessively spending, uh, saving in an adequate way, uh, but also not excessively saving, which we sometimes you know see with 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 clients, right? But it's I, this idea of having a cash flow strategy that will uh, essentially allow you to balance and know what's coming in and what's going on, and that applies really to uh, all stages of life, whether you're just starting out or you are going to be retiring and living off of the assets that you've accumulated. So that's the first thing. The second one is protection, right? We just, you know, talked about wealth accumulation, building wealth in a 401k or building wealth in a rental property, building wealth in a business, building wealth in another financial product or vehicle. It, the idea of wealth building, right, is you start today, you're investing today, it's the seed and ultimately, that wealth starts to compound. But the compounding, the impact of you saving money and investing happens later. And it presupposes that nothing else in life happens between the time you start and the time that that wealth starts to compound. There's lots of things that hap uh, can happen, whether it's you know, health-related, divorce, job loss, market volatility. There's lots of disruptive events that if you're not protected from those events, 
okay? It usually requires people to make decisions that interrupt that wealth building. So the idea of protecting uh, your financial life alongside the wealth that you're building okay, is, is ultimately what's going to get your wealth to materialize with certainty. But because clients come to us and don't necessarily have an adequate protection strategy, okay, they expose themselves right to a lot of risks that are outside of their control, which prevent wealth from materializing. And then the other area is wealth, right? Wealth, there's financial products, you have investments, right? Uh, I would say the inherent idea that people have been taught is that you have to take a lot of risk, high risk equals high reward. So it's kind of this idea of balancing, balancing risk. I think most investment requires risk, but we use a tool called the hierarchy of wealth, which helps clients really visualize the risk they're taking with individual investments or assets that they own, or uh, their assets and wealth as a whole, the amount of risk they are taking on for the return that they're getting. So these are the three areas that if they are healthy, if they're in balance, it allows for your wealth to materialize with certainty and achieve that outcome that you've been striving for. Yeah, absolutely. And you, you know, a lot of, you talked about the, the three phases there with wealth, you know, there, there's a lot of different asset classes that we have in there and, and the hierarchy of wealth allows us to see how those are balanced out. And you take, uh, you know, for instance, you go back to 2008 when all the, the asset prices, you know, were just dropped down on stocks, on properties, et cetera. The people that didn't have the proper allocation were forced to sell. So anybody that's in a forced situation, whether it's to buy something, they have to have it now or to sell something because they have to get rid of it now is usually on the losing end of the stick. So that, that hierarchy of wealth really allows us to balance out those lows. And if you take whether it was a stock or whether it was a piece of real estate from 2008 and they held on 10 years later to 2018, the people that held on, I mean, three, four times their money, the people that were forced to sell took a loss. Yep. So that wealth is kind of a, a deceiving number uh, if, we, if we're not properly allocated. And that's, you know, life, it's inevitable that things are not going to happen the way we think they're going to happen, right? And sometimes they do, right? And, but sometimes they don't. And so the idea is, hey, you want to do the best you can, right? You want to establish your wealth strategy, okay? Protect yourself, ensure cash flow. That's what we help uh, client, clients do, okay? But ultimately, it's to weather these storms because what ends up happening is the obstacles of not having essentially the health related to these areas of life, these dimensions of finance, okay, create uh, an emotional response, right? So it's really not the external, this this challenge that clients face, but it's really what happens inside that's caused by the outside. And inevitably, people usually, not all the time, usually make irrational decisions when they're in an emotional state caused by external circumstances not happening the way that they had uh, had planned for. And this you know, frustration, anxiety, this fear, right, leads to you know, not just bad financial decisions, but it, may, it leads to bad uh, personal decisions. It could affect your profession. It could affect your relationships. It could affect your health, right? So the idea associated with uh, essentially having a healthy life that takes into consideration these elements ensures that as life becomes life, where it ha you know, things happen, uh, new technologies, new relationships, new environments, new tastes, you know, it, life changes. And so yep. this essentially allows you to uh, have a, a foundation where you can approach life and regardless of what happens, find meaning in those experiences. Absolutely. And I think having a strategy, having some, some clarity and a, a plan is more important than ever. We live, we live in a very emotional, fast-driven world. I mean, never in a time before have we been able to buy or sell something so quickly, right? I mean, we can order stuff today and have it by the afternoon on our front porch. We and there's can, an endless amount of things yep. to buy too. <laughs> and we can buy and sell stocks in seconds. And, and with that, it, it's, it's an extremely powerful and benefit, but it can be a detriment as well because we can be very emotionally driven, not only on our purchases, whether it's just our, our spending for, for what we want, but also on our investments. Uh, it's a lot easier to get in bad investments super quick. And it's also very easy to, to sell or just bell on things. So having a plan and knowing why we have things, how they fit in that overall goal, and really looking at from a macro point, realizing there's all these little micro events that happen, but having a plan gets rid of a lot of the emotion driven and 
allows yeah, it's, us to so it's one of the base there. and again it's like our our philosophy as as it's evolved over because because you and I because we've worked uh, so long together you know that we've uh, we've kind of grown side by side and really have seen how the principles that we have espoused relate to real life yeah. right and when you have that healthy balance it becomes the opportunity uh, as opposed to the restriction and, or the problem it's the 2008 to 2009. Right? I think most people's wealth was impacted. Some people saw what was going on, but those that uh, thrived through that experienced some loss, right? but had, whether it was cash or liquidity, uh, where they could essentially capitalize right, on others who did put all their chips on, on red uh, and experience the consequences. Right? So this is the health that we're, that we're talking about. Now, looking at, again, how your financial paradigm is formed, like your view of wealth, your view uh, of life, Okay, most people do not design it strategically. Okay, it was like we said in the beginning is influenced by parents. It's influenced by your environment. I think these days there is so much influence that's out there based on financial celebrities, people that write books, uh, and I feel most people have the right intentions. I'm sure there's some you know there's some exceptions that don't have the right intentions, but these people bring a perspective that they have. Uh, what we've discovered over the course of time is very seldom do you find a, a macroeconomic perspective that accounts for these three areas in a healthy way, where they work alongside themselves, you know, the cash flow protection uh, and wealth side of things. It's typically this like narrow focus on this investment strategy or this narrow focus on this investment product, as opposed to being able to pay attention to wealth as a whole, because financial products have relevance, right, to a macroeconomic financial strategy. Okay, financial products, same thing, investments. Uh, but you also really look at insurance plays a role. Having a good spending strategy plays a role. Again, there's so many different elements. Plus, you have the different stages of financial life where certain products, certain strategies uh, apply and sometimes don't apply. Right. So the idea in the end is you're approaching your financial life, I would say, uh, in a way that you didn't design. And so the results that you're getting right now uh, I'll first say it's not like it's your fault. You didn't choose to have these results. Uh, even if they're decent results, you just want to take life to the next level. Okay? The idea is really looking at, all right, how do I change my paradigm, my perspective of finance, so that I can ensure that I have a healthy balance of these areas of financial life, so that I get the outcomes I, I want, that my family wants, that you, I would say, deserve with the highest degree of certainty possible. Absolutely. I mean, at the end of the day, you're either going by your plan or someone else's, right? So by default, if you just uh, don't plan, you're, you're putting together what someone else did, so. Yep, so this is this, you know, the, you've probably heard if you're a client of ours, you know, the perpetual wealth strategy is, uh, is something that has, you know, evolved, it's something we espouse and really look at ways in which we can ensure our clients uh, essentially live, live the life that they uh, deserve, right? And it's totally possible, especially in our modern era. So it's really taking uh, this, perspective, this paradigm, and evaluating where you are uh, in financial life based on these three areas. What does your cash flow look like? What are the strategies to optimize it? Save taxes, get out of debt, uh, and it could just be a spending strategy so you don't succumb to you know, the myriad of things, the abundance of things there is to buy, right? So you do so responsibly, like you earn money, you spend money, but you do it in a way that's responsible so that you can set money aside for the future as opposed to saving minimal amounts of money uh, or going into excessive high interest debt. Uh, but then it's also ensuring that you're adequately protected, okay? protected in a way, whether it's your business, whether it's your home, whether it's your car, uh, whether it's just you know, overarching liability coverage uh, through an umbrella policy. You know, it could be estate planning, it could be your business entities. There's so many different ways in which we can protect ourselves uh, that are overlooked by the financial world. And then ultimately, it's wealth. How do you build wealth uh, in a way where you get good returns but don't take on excessive, uh, excessive risks? So this is the approach we take to, to finance. It's how we view financial products. It's how we evaluate them. It's how we review and evaluate financial strategies as well. Uh, so adopting, embracing, uh, and adhering to the perpetual wealth strategy, the, the end goal is to get the most amount of wealth with the highest degree of certainty. Love it. Now, looking at you know where where this is coming from, right? I I grew up in you know a household that 
uh, two you know, w- working parents, both were school teachers. Uh, I had set out to become a school teacher and I had you know, some, some things that happened. I tell that story in the, the book that, uh, that, came out with, uh, that came out in 2018, Heads I Win, Tails You Lose. Uh, but I wasn't born with you know, uh, this financial perspective. It's something I've gained over the course of time. I happened to fall into this industry uh, the financial services industry in, in 2007, creating Paradigm Life. Uh, and since then, we've you know, worked collectively as a group with thousands of clients uh, all over the country, uh, also different countries. So in doing that, you know, law of large numbers, you, you identify patterns, right? And I saw these patterns within the behavior of, of human beings. It started out even before Paradigm, where when I was uh, in college, I, I spent you know, about six months in a call center that was helping people avoid bankruptcy by consolidating high interest debt. I couldn't believe the situations people got themselves into. So I was exposed at a very early time as to you know, the obstacles people face when it comes to, to money. Uh, and then as paradigm accelerated and took off, I experienced even more uh, scenarios, all of which had some similarities, but, but all invariably had differences. And so the idea is you know, we, we come to you with the strategies because we know what you're going through. Uh, we've experienced it in the lives of our clients, and we've experienced some, you know, some things personally, right, which have taught us the lessons that now we get to, uh, to bring to you. Uh, but John, you know, y- you have uh, an incredible story, and you know, really look at looking at what brought you uh, to, to Paradigm. You know, you you experienced uh, the business world, you experienced the investment world, so it was a different type of experience. But we came from different places only to form very similar conclusions. Absolutely. You know, I had, I had the benefit. I grew up with a father that uh, had kind of a devil on two shoulders, right? Uh, <laughs> his parents, uh, my grandparents, really suffered through the Great Depression. And that uh, formed an opinion and a, a strategy to life and a scarcity really to, to a lot of their finances up until the day they died. Uh, my dad was... Um, he had the, this producer, he could create or do anything, but he also had this scarcity. And so it, it, I've, I've seen him even to this day battle those, those two things. And um, it, it, it's really interesting because we all have a different background, but in a way we're kind of like teenagers. We all think we're unique and nobody understands and our journey is different, but it doesn't really matter our past, our present, really what we're, where we're at, where we're trying to go. The whole concept of cash flow protection and wealth pertains to every single one of us. Now, how we apply it, our individual goals, those are unique, but the principles we build it on are, are so universal. And so, you know, as you talk about coming from different paths, we all got here different ways, but principles are principles. They don't, don't change. So that's one thing that I think is very unique with clients is realizing these universal principles and applying them to their life. It's, it's uh, the results are the same across yep. the board. And most people don't t- have that approach. And it's, you know, I, I think that's what's empowering about our position and we're really what keeps us uh, going, continuing to learn, and continue to help clients uh, solve problems, optimize uh, you know, what they already have going on, but you know, maximize uh, the strengths that they have to lead the most meaningful life possible. Because clients usually come to us because they experience something that didn't work, right? And it was the frustration, it was the anxiety, it was the hardship, right? It was that emotion, those emotions, you just don't, you don't want to feel, especially when it comes to money, because it carries over to areas of life that are most important to you. So really looking at what's fulfilling about our roles, we get to see these transformations in clients where they come to us with feeling a certain way about their finances. And as they establish a strategy that is more macroeconomic, that essentially optimizes their cash flow, it ensures that there's optimal protection uh, so that as life kind of unfolds, uh, the experiences you weren't prepared for can be covered by your protection strategy and ultimately have a wealth building strategy uh, that is uh, balanced and more based on what you can control and influence as opposed to taking unnecessary risk. So this transformation, right? Again, li- life is life. Life, we have a snapshot in time today, but life continues to unfold. And so the more you adhere to principles, right, and continually, uh, I would say, um, modify your strategy, uh, iterate on you know, what you already have, continually trying to find gains and opportunities. Okay? Again, it comes down to principles as- associated with the actual strategies you're going to implement because if it's based on principle, the, there's a much higher likelihood it's going to manifest or materialize. Well, John, it was awesome to, to have you on for, uh, for this episode. 
uh, you know, this is something we're, we're passionate about. You know, we follow uh, ourselves. Uh, you've obviously built uh, incredible personal wealth, right, alongside helping, helping clients. Uh, you know, this is what we live and breathe every day. Personal finance is, uh, is our life. And we're uh, excited through this podcast series to continually teach you and inspire you to take your wealth to the next level. So, John, thanks, uh, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Patrick. So as we get into this uh, specific educational series called Wealth Maximization uh, Account Mastery, uh, this is essentially the view we are taking. And so as we talk about uh, in these next couple of videos, our core financial product, uh, which is the Wealth Maximization Account, a high cash value life insurance policy, uh, we're going to essentially show how this vehicle applies to pretty much every uh, aspect of financial life uh, that we've just demonstrated to you today. So, John, I'm excited. We're going to get into some stories. We're going to get into some anecdotes uh, and really uh, help the listeners, the viewers, to see what's possible within this really foundational financial product uh, as it pertains to you uh, achieving those wealth goals that you deserve. So stick with us to the next videos.